Raider Nation. Raider Nation. Raider Nation. Raider Nation. This is your president speaking. And I approve this message. Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders. Just win, baby. Win, baby. Win, baby. We are the Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders. Oakland Raiders. Just win, baby. Win, baby. Win, baby. Win, baby. Don't need no invitation. We are that Raider Nation. We rock that black and silver. We make them shake and shiver. We make them reconsider. And we still committed. So if you want a piece of this. Welcome, Raider Nation. Welcome back to the Raider Critique. Now, I haven't gone over anything throughout the preseason, but we did just see a first week one season win by the Raiders for the first time in a long time. And I'll tell you what, to be honest, thank you, offense. Thank you very much, offense, for being on point. I'm going to go over the stats here in a minute, but as my overall hypothesis on what I saw in the game is that our offense is the only reason why in the hell we stayed in it, and our offense is the only reason why we won, along with some very clever play calling by head coach Jack Del Rio and offensive co coordinator Bill Musgrave. Now, normally I don't come out here and I do videos, uh praising my team or praising our team I should say since you know mostly anybody who's watching these videos are Raider fans anyway which there's millions and millions and millions and millions of us so hopefully maybe one day the uh, this channel will catch on but I mean our defense our front seven not bad uh, really I mean they did the best they possibly could against a very stout line and uh, we have Atlanta this week I hope that we can step up and play better defensively not really pass rush wise because I do think that we're getting enough pressure on the quarterback I don't think that's the issue the issue is our secondary and this is what I've been harping about in all these videos that I've always made is that our weak point has always seemed to be our secondary now when we had old Chuck Woodson back there it definitely fortified the deep side of the field to where nobody was getting burned deep all the time not the case on the first week of the season Sean Smith was burned multiple times he got burned so much that his bitch ass got benched and they had every right to bench him as far as I'm concerned, we spent all this money on this motherfucker, and he's going to come out there and show exactly what he showed in Washington, that he's not worth a flying fuck. And to be honest with you, DJ Hayden, as his replacement, didn't do well either. Why did we draft this guy? I mean, what the fuck is the point of having this dude if he's just going to get burned left and right? Now, he did do a better job than Sean Smith. And, of course, we're not spending nowhere near as much money on DJ Hayden as we have on Sean Smith. But you guys are still getting beat deep. David Amerson is the only decent-looking corner on the team, and he can't be perfect. I mean what the fuck we have one of the best fucking cornerback coaches secondary coaches ever to fucking play in the NFL in Rod Woodson and you're telling me that you can't figure this fucking shit out you know I mean you guys are professionals you play football Sean Smith Dude, you don't get, you don't let the dude get behind you, man. You don't sit there and keep running when you know homeboy's gonna do a button hook. You were burned so many times that game that you deserve to be benched. You deserve to ride the pine. You literally do because that's not what the hell you you've been paid to do. You did not fucking, they didn't pay you to come in and suck. I mean, give me a break, man. I mean, you, 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 you've gotten a second chance. Hell, you've gotten a third chance. Now over here in the dark side, and is the, and this is how you repay us. Really. This is how you repay us. You're going to get burned, and you're going to get fucking shit talked about you online since you can't even hang with a fucking number one wide receiver. Dude, come on. Hang with the number one wide receiver? You can't even hang with the number two, dude. Give me a break, man. No wonder why Kansas City cut your ass. 
You know what I mean? They're laughing all the way to the fucking bank now that they got your money. You know what I mean? And they're now you're our fucking problem. Tighten the fuck up back there, dude. Tighten up. All right, let's. All right, now that I'm done with the fucking rant and raving, let's go ahead and go over the offensive statistics of what we went through on week one. So that's actually more interesting than me bitching about Sean Smith and how he likes to blow coverages. You know. Total, uh, total first downs. We had 25 first downs, and our opponent had 27 first downs. I mean, basically, we had 167 yards rushing. Our offensive plays for average uh, was 7.6. Our total offensive yards was 486. So, I mean, Derek Carr had a wonderful game. You know, Drew Brees threw for 507 yards on us, guys. You know what I mean? 507 yards. I mean, that says it all right there, Sean Smith, DJ Hayden. 507 yards. Yeah, this is so this is how <laughs> so this is how we're going to play secondary in uh, in Oakland, right? 507 yards. Jesus. Well, at least Derek Carr did good. He had 24 of 38 for 319 yards and 63.2% completion percentage. 8.4 yards per attempt. One touchdown, no interceptions. His longest pass was 43 yards. Now, running backs, the TBS Murray didn't look all that bad. It was 14 attempts for 59 yards and an average of 4.2. It's a whole lot better than Darren McFadden's 3.3 when he played for us, so I still think that we upgraded at running back considering that uh, Darren McFadden really did have a good year last year for Dallas, although he is hurt now. So don't think I don't know that shit. Of course his ass is hurt, man. He was always fucking injury prone. Jalen Richard, three attempts for 84 yards. Man, this guy had such a great showing. I actually picked his ass up for my fantasy football team. I hope to God that he has a good game. But knowing that I picked him up, yeah, it's probably going to give him bad luck, guys. I'm sorry. You know, I, I probably shouldn't have done that yet. DeAndre Washington, man. DeAndre Washington had five attempts for 14 yards. Now, I don't understand why everybody's been so high on this guy. He's a small scat back. He does have some hit power about him, but if you know anything about the Raiders, you guys already know, we don't do well with small scat backs because of our zone blocking scheme. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Scat backs do not work. That's why Darren McFadden didn't work. That's why uh, Napoleon Kaufman didn't really work. You know, Marcus Allen was our best scat back ever. And, you know, even he is foreshadowed by Bo Jackson. You know, we've always had better luck with bigger dudes like Tyrone Wheatley, Tom Rathman, you know, nice big stout backs who might not be the fastest dudes, but they're definitely going to get by that first hit because zone blocking fucking sucks. Period. Michael Crabtree, seven receptions for 87 yards. Amari Cooper, six for 137. It's about damn time, man, sitting there looking at preseason. I didn't think he was ever going to come out of his shell. I figured he was going to be in a sophomore slump or something, man. I'm talking about giving me a heart. At least he's starting to do well. And then, of course, you know, we had three receptions to Clive Walford. Tywon Jones had two for 17. Seth Roberts, two for 19. He also had one drop. Seth, man, hold on to the ball. You know? I know Marquette King had four punts. They're at least saying that for a 49.8-yard average. That's not bad at all. All right. Well, let's see what they say about us defensively. All right, defensively. Reggie Nelson, the highlight of our secondary with eight total tackles, seven solo, one assist. Malcolm Smith, eight tackles, four solo, four assists. Khalil Mack, seven total, four solo, three assists. No sacks. DJ Hayden, five total, four solo, one assist. That's because they kept throwing it that way. Why wouldn't they when you can't stop it? You know? Ben Heaney had five tackles, three solos, two assists. You know, Justin Ellis had three tackles. Danico Autry had three tackles, one solo, two assists. Man, 
the we only had one sack, which came from Bruce Irvin, and he only had two total tackles and one solo tackle and one assisted tackle with one sack. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, and a fumble. So he did cause. Well, look at look at old Sean Smith here. Sean Smith, one total tackle, one solo. That's all he did all game long. That 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 should tell you something about Sean Smith. Look, dude, if you ain't going to tighten up, bro, you're going to be on the bench. I'm telling you right now, this is a new Raider franchise, a new Raider organization. They think things a little bit differently, man. You can't come in here and suck no more. That's, hey, sucking is not going to get you anywhere here except for your ass straight fucking in free agency. You dig what I'm saying? So anyway, that's what we did against New Orleans. We barely fucking won. We scraped by on the hair of our chinny chin chin because of Jack Del Rio and his fucking miraculous call to go for two. And a beautiful pass to Michael Crabtree from fucking Derek Carr to solidify that win. And thank you, defense, for stepping up at the last drive of the game, not letting Drew Brees get all the way down the field to where they could kick a short field goal. Now, of course, they did kick a long field goal, but, man, their kicker already missed like a 32-yarder earlier in the game. I wasn't worried about him hitting that 49-yarder. I knew he was going to blow it. And sure enough, he shanked that shit wide right. We got lucky. Now, if we fucking play like this against Denver or Kansas City, or even San Diego, if our defense plays this way, man, we're going to be playing catch-up all game long, and you guys are going to put more pressure on Derek Carr to be fucking pulling off the Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre fucking treatment, and coming down fucking fourth quarter comebacks. I mean, look, I understand he's a badass quarterback. I, I've, been, I've been praising him the whole time he's been on the team, all right? But is is there any point to keep putting him in that situation? Oh, okay, maybe he needs the experience. The dude's already got six fourth-quarter comebacks. Six fourth-quarter comebacks, guys. You know what I mean? Stop doing that to him. If you like him, maybe you'll fucking hold some offenses to where we can get some blowouts this year. Anyway, I'm signing out, and I will talk to you guys after the game tomorrow versus Atlanta. Open Raiders, open Raiders, open Raiders, just win, baby, win, baby, win, baby, win, baby. Don't need no invitation, no. we on that Raider Nation. Yeah. We rock that black and silver, rock, we rock. make them shake and shiver, uh. we make them reconsider, and we still committed. So if you want a piece of this, you can come and get it. I'm the president of the Raider Nation, please use this as motivation. If you want a piece of this.